Hello there, everyone. My name is Teresa McCloy, and you're listening to the Real Life Process Podcast. I am the creator and founder of the Real Life Process, and I am so excited that you're here today. Each and every week here on the podcast, whether you're a first time listener or you've been listening to us for a long time, we love to share tips and stories and really practical action steps that will help you live a life from rest, not rush, and really do what matters. We want to share ideas that really come from our signature content that we call the real life process, and they help you thrive in your life and in your work. And this content is really just a framework. It's just something for you to hang your hat on and help you develop what we call a unique modern day rule of life, where we have self-discovery, we break it it down into actionable projects around what you've discovered about yourself. We talk about really great tactical time management, and then we wrap it all up with spiritual practices underneath. Together, we can discover how to craft a full and extraordinary life for you. So whether you're listening in to grow yourself Or for many of you, you not only want to grow yourself, but you want to grow your business. We're just glad you're listening and becoming a part of the Real Life Process community. I am so excited today on this episode to actually dive into that last part that I just mentioned. Yes, we do wonderful self-discovery about learning about your real self. And yes, we do wonderful... um, breaking down of projects into what are the projects that I want to work on in the next few months. And we talk about those tactical time management, living my rich and full life through my calendar every day. But what really ties this all together, and I'll share a little bit today from my own story, is the spiritual practices, the faith-focused place that I come from and that I believe many of you come from as well. And so that's what's underneath the real life process. If you're watching us on our YouTube channel, I'm holding up our brand new book. I got the very first copies of the book last week. The book is called Do What Matter, Live from Rest, Not Rush, Using the Real Life Process. And we'll have a link in the show notes of how you can pre-order the book. It actually releases the 1st of November on all the book bookshelves, bookstores, all the places that you would normally buy your books. We'll have an ebook version that's also coming out, a Kindle version. But we just wanted to share with you that the book is available for pre-order. And much of what I'm talking about here, uh, even in today's episode on the podcast, actually comes from the book. We've taken you back through in the last few episodes here on the podcast, all of the foundational framework of the real life process. But this particular chapter is towards the end of the book where it talks about, and the title of the chapter is, practices behind the process. What are the things, what are the glue that holds this whole thing together? What's the place that makes it sustainable? If you're looking on the YouTube channel, you can see this graphic, but I want to describe it for you. We have the graphic of the triangle and then the three arrows that go around the triangle. Those three arrows are actually moving in a counterclockwise direction. Now, I didn't even notice that that's how I had put together. It was kind of one of those God moments where actually someone on my team pointed out to me just a few months ago that those arrows are going backwards. And actually about six months ago, as we were designing the book cover with those arrows on it, we noticed that the arrows are going backwards. And I do think it was a God moment because that's part of this idea of the sustainability of spiritual practices. They actually help to slow us down. Intentional slowing, intentional noticing. And that was something for me in my story 
uh, several years ago that I was not doing. It was something I was seeking. It was a part of the rest that I needed was to intentionally slow myself down. Now, that doesn't mean I have to slow down to a dead stop. It just needs means I needed to give some different focus to some different areas of my life. So as we walk through these four components over the last few episodes, and as you listened into um, component number one about real life being, defining what matters in your life, component number two about how am I going to take action and create those 90-day actionable steps, that's a very forward moving. I want to put some things into action so I can live this extraordinary life that I know that God has called me to live. And then real life time, how am I going to live this out in a calendar framework so that all of it belongs, the time with my family, with my friends, with those that I care about, the time for fun and recreation, and the time for work and the purposeful work that I'm called to do. And then that fourth component that we talked about just on last week's episode of living with rhythms and routines of rest and renewal and review. Underneath all of that are these spiritual practices underneath the process. And this is really where I had to start and take some very small steps to create this rule of life that I now live by, this place that I now live. And so as I got into my story and as I'm writing about it, even in this chapter of the book, you know, it wasn't anyone's fault. It wasn't my husband Dale's fault. It wasn't my daughter's fault. And it most certainly wasn't my son Eric's fault that I was battling this workaholic behavior, this speeding up of self. Eric's battle with addiction became the catalyst that made me sit up and say, What's something has to change here? Something has to be different. I knew that my behaviors, my rhythms, my routines had to be different if real and lasting change was going to happen. Now, many of you have, like me, uh, started exercise programs or started a new way of eating or tried to change a behavior. And we know that it's difficult, that you have to do it consistently, day after day after day. And if you have a relapse, as we say, you have to start the next day. It's a new day. It's a fresh day. So I had to realize that this wasn't to make changes in behaviors. It wasn't about another self-help book. It wasn't about seeking out and creating, uh, you know, new and different, uh, routines. I'll do this for six months. This is going to be the program that's going to help me. It was about underneath underlying practices and rhythms and behaviors that I wanted to bring into my life. And so I began very small, just what am I going to add this month? What am I going to add in uh, next month? What is sustainable for me over time? So as I developed out the real life process, these practices, these spiritual rhythms for me came underneath And so I want to give credit to a couple of places that really helped to form me. And we'll have links to this in your show notes. One of those was a book that's written by Adele Calhoun. And in that book, she gives all kinds of spiritual practices and ways that we live out practices and spiritual rhythms in our life. And so that is definitely a resource that I would recommend. And you will be introduced to ones that you really never thought were a spiritual practices. And so go and go to the show notes, check that out, find Adele's book. Adele Calhoun's book on those spiritual rhythms and spiritual practices. Another one that uh, really was impactful for me, and I talk about it in the book as well, that I'm writing is Ruth Haley Barton's work and her work of living into the rhythms of your life. She has several different books. Uh, All of them are great reads. And both of those, and I will say too that I was a part of Ruth's community, her uh, transforming uh, community that she runs out of Chicago, Illinois. 
It was a huge part of my story of learning to live into these rhythms and routines. So great resources. You can check those out in the show notes. But I want to walk through on today's podcast just eight of these practices. And I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. And you can actually go to the YouTube channel that we now have at the Real Life Process YouTube channel, and you can see the screenshots of each of these disciplines. And they'll also be in the book when it comes out this fall, but I want to walk you through them. One of them that uh, is just a different way of looking at things is the first one I want to talk about is the practice of discernment. And discernment's a little bit different than decision making. It opens us up to listen and recognize the voice of God and the direction that's going in our lives. And so the practice of discernment really comes in in that real self-discovery piece. What are the areas of focus that matter to me? How do I want to discern those? I just don't want to pull them out of thin air. I really want to have a conversation with God about what are the areas that he's calling me to that matter in my life right now. So that's a place that we see discernment, that I see discernment coming in underneath in uh, the real life process. The other one that is kind of a spiritual word is the practice of daily and weekly examine. And the purpose of this one is to reflect on where I most and least, where I was most and least present to God's love in the day. Now, you, many of you that are listening to the podcast know that uh, we do this through component number four, through weekly review. I actually do it as a daily practice with the posts that I make in social media about, you know, what was my extraordinary moment of the day or what was difficult today in an ordinary day, in an ordinary life, Romans 12, 1 and 2, in my everyday ordinary life. What was extraordinary? What was ordinary? What is God calling me to notice? So that practice, how are you going to practice a daily or a weekly examine? The next one is actually the practice of solitude and silence. Now, this one leans into another practice we'll talk about here in a minute, which is the practice of slowing. But for me, solitude and silence was one of my biggest challenges. I remember when my spiritual director that I was meeting with actually asked me to sit still for five minutes and just listen. Oh my, what a challenge that was. I asked him several times, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do while I'm listening? And he was like, I just want you to listen. So the purpose of this one is to leave people behind and enter into a time alone. I really feel like we can live this out in the framework of the real life process in several different places. It can be part of that daily examine or weekly examine piece to have that quiet and still. It can be built into your present block as you take time on a daily basis to just be present to self and to be present in your relationship um, with God. It can be a part of maybe a quarterly retreat that you go on to do a reset of your real life process and to get back up on the balcony of your life. There are so many places that you can practice the silence and solitude uh, peace inside of the real life process. So that is another one. The other one is breath prayer. Now this one may not be one that you're super familiar with, but breath prayer is just that idea of what is a simple prayer that I can pray in a breath in and a breath out. For me, my breath prayer is, you are my rock and my redeemer, in you there is hope. Simple prayer that I can pray in and out. So when how we practice this in the process is when we're in the middle of the day and we feel ourselves speeding up, we can take that breath, a moment of silence and solitude, just say, How does God show up for me? What are the ways that I would describe uh, my Heavenly Father in a certain way? How would I describe him? What are the characteristics? For me, it's rock and redeemer. And in you, there is hope. Because I always want to see the hope. I want to see the light that God is bringing. But for you, it may be different. But what is that short, 
breath prayer that you'd like to create that you use and that you use throughout the day to slow you down, to bring you back to present. Or even when something difficult comes up and you know that it's going to be hard and you're in that moment and you can feel your heart racing, how would you want to show up and and use the breath prayer? The practice of Sabbath. Now, this may, again, not be a word that you're familiar with. It may be a word that you've practiced all your life or you've known about all your life, but it's that set apart one day a week for rest and worship of God. And where we practice the Sabbath is part of that day of rest and review and renewal that we have in the fourth component. So how am I taking a day to renew and lean into fun and creative things different outside of my everyday uh, work life? But then also, how am I resting? And how does it feel restful for me? Remember, living from rest, not from rush. How do I start from a place of rest? There's a whole thing we could talk about there of Sunday uh, for many people is a day of rest. And that being the first day of the week, how we renew ourselves through rest is super, super important. And then the practice of retreat. Now, this is something when I was in Ruth's program and I was learning about spiritual formation, and I was a part of that program for almost six years. It was a huge part of my life, a huge season. But part of the gift of that program was going on a regular rhythm of retreat. When we train our certified facilitators and bring them into our program to use this content in the work that we do, we actually have two retreats a year for them. And the reason is because we want to create for them that rhythm, that routine that they can lead into of stepping out of their ordinary lives into a place where they can come and learn, they can spend time in community with others to pull back from daily life and spend an extended time. And we encourage our facilitators and those that are learning to live in a modern day rule of life in to this place to create the practice of retreat, to lean into that. How can I get away, spend some time with God, but also then do some resetting? We'll talk about that next week on the episode. How do we reset and restart and reconnect and get back up on that balcony and practice that rhythm of retreat? So that is a huge one. It's part of that fourth component as well of rest and renew. And then the practice of slowing. How do I slow down? What are some ways that I can build that into this rule of life? to curb my addiction to busyness, hurry and workaholism, to learn to savor the moments. So what are ways inside of the rule of life that you're creating that you can slow down? I believe that retreats will do that. A day of rest will do that. Looking at your calendar very purposefully in component number three and saying, how much is enough? How much am I trying to cram into this day? I will give an example, a real life example yesterday. Uh, This was the routine of my day, or this was the schedule of my day yesterday. Actually spoke at an event yesterday morning. I did a workshop for a local group here in my community that I'm working with. And then I had a coaching call. I had some other work to do in the office. But about three o'clock, I thought, you know, I want to go home. I want to go home early today. Um, I have an outside... Uh, office outside of my home. And it's about a 20 mile drive. But I knew that my entire family, my husband, my daughter, my son-in-law, and another man that works for us were all home bailing hay yesterday. And uh, the time of year that I'm recording this episode is summertime. It's June. It's time for us to bale hay on the farm. And it happened to be an extremely hot day. Uh, Not normal for June weather, but it was a super hot day. And I knew in my heart, I was drawn back to the farm to be with my family. Now, in my former self, in my unhealthy side of self as a type three on the Enneagram, I would have stayed at work and continued because I had a list of things I still needed to do, things I still needed to get done. 
But I really discerned and thought for myself, you know what? I want to slow down a bit today. I want to go spend time and just ride in the pickup truck with my daughter, going to get the loads and bringing them home. And so I just took a couple of hours and I just slowed myself down and said, no, I don't need to do these things. My workaholic addictive behavior to work wanted to push through and get all these things done. But I just took a moment and I discerned that I could do it differently, that I could actually come in early this morning, which is what I'm doing, and record this podcast this morning and not do it yesterday afternoon, that I could practice slowing down. And so this particular practice kind of encompasses all of them to me. How am I stepping back and noticing where I want to lean into what culture tells me of get more done and really learn to savor the moments? And that is what I wanted to do. That helps me into this last practice of the practice of rest, to honor God and my own human limitations through restful rhythms to lean into the rhythms that I know are right for me, the rhythms that bring rest, renew, and uh, places of joy into my life. And so where do you see bringing in those practices of rest? So these are the practices behind the process. There are so many more practices that you can discover through uh, Adele's book. You might really want that as a resource. We'll have that in the show notes. But I'd love to encourage you to take time to journal about what practice do you want to start? What do you feel an invitation to in the next 30 days? Where could you lean in to some of these practices, these rhythms, these behaviors that are born into the process, that are underneath the process. I do want to say, you know, in order to live out the process, you will want to sustain some of these practices. You'll want them to come in. This is why I've been able to live in this lifestyle, in this modern day rule of life for almost six or seven years now. And it's because I've put in these practices that really come underneath the framework of the real life process underneath these components. So different language maybe than you've heard before in these practices. You can read more about this when the book comes out in a few months, but we wanted to introduce to you these practices behind the process. We have some other episodes that we've done around uh, this work of practices and spiritual practices. We'll reference some of those in the show notes. So if you want to listen to more, if you want to hear these played out a little bit deeper, uh, you can go and you can reference that as well in the show notes. So remember that we have lots of ways that you can connect with us here at The Real Life Process. You can go to our website at therealliferocess.com. Remember that we spell real life with one L. You can join our Facebook group uh, that we have, The Real Life Process Community. You can follow us on our YouTube channel. And more than anything, we would be so honored if you would even share out this podcast with two or three other people on your social media or send it to them uh, by link, by email or text. And one of the greatest compliments you can pay us is to actually give the podcast a review on your favorite uh, social media or podcast listening device that you listen on. If you can go give us a review of the podcast, we would absolutely love that. One of our favorite places is actually on Apple Podcast. That is so helpful for us. And uh, we would really appreciate you connecting with us there. But And also subscribe to our new YouTube channel. That's one of the places we're showing up now. So thank you so much for listening to this episode and leaning into these different spiritual practices and uh, just how they come underneath the process. Maybe you're someone who just wants to put this into your life and live it out, but maybe you're a coach or a consultant or an entrepreneur that says, you know what? I love this framework. I'd love to take parts of this framework and bring it into the work that I do. And if that's you, then we want to encourage you to reach out and find more information on our website about our certified facilitator program and how you can use this work and the work that you're already doing serving your customers and your clients. 
So if that's you, head on over to the website and check that out as well. You can also download that free needs and values assessment that we have. It's one of our signature tools. We love diving in and we'd love to share that with you. Make sure that uh, you come back next week to the next episode as we wrap up the series that we've done about all the work of the real life process. And we're going to talk about how you do that 90 day reset up on the balcony, resetting for the next season of life through the real life process. So remember that every ordinary day has an extraordinary moment. You just have to look for them. And we'll be back next week with more of the Real Life Process Podcast.